Welcome back to Hoenn for the final starter of the trio. Mudkip was always my second favorite just behind Trico, but I know it's the speedrunner's choice, so I expect great results from it today. The Mudkip line has incredible attack, it has mid-range HP, defense, special attack, and special defense, and they're all perfectly balanced. Its main drawback though is the fact that this little cutie is not particularly fast. As it evolves, its attack continues to be its standout stat, while its HP, defense, and special remain balanced. However, its special attack doesn't grow as quickly, and its speed falls even further behind. In Generation 3, damage category, meaning the stat that a particular move uses to calculate damage, is determined by the move's type, so all water type attacks are special attacks. That means Swampert will comparatively hit much harder with its ground type attacks, rather than its water type attacks. Now, Water Ground is a really awesome typing. Ground gives an immunity to Electric, removing one of Water's weaknesses, while Water resists itself and Ice, removing two of Ground's weaknesses. The only issue is that both types are weak to Grass, making Swampert take four times damage from those moves. I think that it's kind of the developers to make Mudkip start as a mono Water type that gives players some time to get a feel for it before the double weakness is introduced. Luckily its move pool is quite diverse and that gives it some coverage against its biggest weakness. Here are some of the notable moves on its moveset and there are quite a few I'm going to try to get through this in one breath. Mud Slap, Mud Shot, Take Down, Muddy Water, Protect, Earthquake, Water Pulse, Hidden Power, Ice Beam, Blizzard, Hyper Beam, Rain Dance, Iron Tail, Return, Dig, Brick Break, Rock Tomb, Secret Power, Rest, and Surf. Oh that's a lot of moves. These Gen 3 move pools are a lot different than their Gen 1 counterparts. Also, it gets even more moves, but those are through move tutors, and most of those won't be accessible today because you need battle points to get them. The ice moves cover its double weakness to grass types, however, these utilize its special attack, so I'd like to have a physical move that hits grass types for super effective damage. I set my IVs so that Swampert has hidden power flying. By the way, I've left a link in the description to a site that shows you the required IVs for the most powerful hidden power of each type. In my videos, I want to give each Pokemon the best possible chance to put out good results, so that's why I manipulate my starter with the save editor. I also can change its nature. A viewer suggested that I give my Mudkip a sassy nature to combat grass types. This decreases my speed and increases my special defense. This is my third generation 3 video, so I'll just take the advice because I'm still learning these games and I'm quite bad at them. Thanks for helping out, I really appreciate it. Now, I have high expectations for this run, and that's because speedrunners pick Mudkip when they play Emerald. However, while what I do is essentially speedrunning, there are enough differences that I should address them. Here are my rules. I only allow my starter in battle, no items in battle except for held items, no glitches or exploits that break the game, no TM32 before level 100, and no farming pickup mules because I think that ability just makes things a little bit too random. However, in a regular speedrun, the player can use other Pokemon in battle, use items in battle, use some exploits and some glitches depending on the run's category, and they can also use double team. A typical Pokemon Emerald speedrun starts with Mudkip and later on in the playthrough replaces it with Rayquaza. I know a lot of you are going to say, no, it's Rayquaza. Well, uh, it's actually based on Ray and Quasar, so it's Rayquaza. I actually used to say Rayquaza as a kid as well, but uh, yeah, I've changed it in recent years. Obviously, adding this powerful legendary to your team will be faster than using a starter Pokemon, so if you're wondering why this video is going to be different than your run-of-the-mill speedrun, well, I won't be able to finish the league off with Rayquaza. Also, speedrunners finish the game after the league, while I require myself to defeat Steven. Finally, I'm really new to this game, so I expect some blunders rather than the refined optimization and perfection that speedrunners regularly display. Also, let's talk about optimization and how it relates to my video format. I've made the decision to only do a single playthrough in Generation 3 games, so this video is not going to have any testing section or follow-up optimized playthrough. There are three reasons why this is the best choice for me to make right now. Number one, I don't know the game well enough to optimize, even after really thinking things through, I miss major details and I just don't have enough practice, so I always end up disappointed with my second playthroughs, and I don't think they're really good to put out there as like a scientific result. It's not a good finding quite yet because I just don't know the games well enough. Number two, the time required to beat generation three is like four times that which it requires to beat generation one. Doing multiple runs just means that I won't be able to produce a video every week, and I don't think that that's very fun for either of us. Number three, 
it's stressful always trying to optimize. I'm actually really looking forward to just playing this game, trying things out, learning new things along the way, and not really worrying about making the perfect plays all the time. This is how Generation 1 and Generation 2 felt when I first started playing them on the channel, and I'm really excited to get back to a little bit more of that exploratory approach. All of this does mean that eventually I see myself doing repeat playthroughs in Generation 3, just not right now. So help me learn these games by leaving comments about what I missed and how I can improve. Thanks so much. Now, let's get into it. Roxanne is the first gym leader, and for my water type, I think she's going to be so simple. I skip all the trainers in her gym and go directly for her. She leads with Geodude. Water gun hits and it takes it out in a single hit. Her next one is no different and last is nose pass. Mm, this thing. <laughs> As a kid, I was always so confused when grass and water moves didn't knock it out in a single hit. Most rock type Pokemon, like almost all of them, introduced in the series until this point, were dual types that included the ground typing, making them four times weak to grass and water attacks. The only other mono rock type introduced before generation three was Pseudo Udo, and I really didn't fight very many of those, like there's only one that you fight in gold and silver. This makes Nose Pass a bit annoying for Mudkip to knock out, especially because it has a berry and Roxanne uses two potions to heal it, but eventually it falls and I've earned myself the first badge. Mudkip evolves into Marsh Tomp while I save Pico, and then I backtrack to face Mei. By the way, this battle is actually optional, but I didn't really know that at this point, so I'm just fighting her. Wingull is first. I think I should have taught Marsh Tomp Rock Tomb for this fight. It takes forever to knock the Water Flying type out as a result. It gets Growl in. Uh, against Trico, I can hardly do anything as a result, and Marsh Tomp now has the Ground type, so Trico's doing a lot. After losing, I teach Rock Tomb, and I try again. This makes everything so much better. Plus, I get a critical hit against Trico and take it out in two hits. All right, it's uh, time for a boat ride. I grab the old rod, catch a Magikarp, name her Bruno, and then I head to the gym to face Brawly. Up first is Machop. While Mudshot is doing a good amount of damage, Bulk Up prevents the KO, Brawly Super Potions, and things aren't off to a good start as a result. I'll make a note here that I don't have my current stats in this video, it's just my base stats displaying in the bottom left. That's because this was filmed before we solved the technical barriers with Game Hook. Real time stats are coming to Hoenn soon, don't worry. Meditite's next, Mudshot misses, and as a result it gets to use Focus Punch for the KO. Alright, I'll head over to Granite Cave first instead of trying Brawly again, that was not very fun. By the way, I found out after my Sceptile video that you can just go to Slateport right away. You don't actually need to defeat Brawly. As a kid, I thought that I had to defeat him and deliver the letter to Steven before I could proceed. Turns out the only requirement to proceed is delivering the letter to Steven. After that, you can leave Duford behind and proceed with your adventure if you want. With how Marsh Tomp did against Brawly the first time, I think that it's a good idea to do that today. I'll backtrack here when I have to. In the museum, I realized just how much of Generation 3 is sort of a poetic echo of Generation 1. It's like poetry, so sort if of they rhyme. Ah, how creative. It's so similar to the one in Pewter City, however in this case I actually have to go in here, whereas I can just skip the one in Pewter City all the time. With the Team Aqua members defeated, I head north, defeat some trainers, enter the Trick House, earn myself a rare candy, and now it's time for a notoriously tricky rival battle. May leads with Wingle, and it does a surprising amount of damage before it goes down. Grovile's next. Here's my live reaction to it, by the way. Oh. Oh. Okay, let's try this one again. Wingull misses Supersonic, Rock Tomb one hits, Grovile hits the field, and its absorb takes Marsh Tomp to 10 hit points. Then Mudshot connects with it, and it only does about a third. Making matters worse, Grovile moves first now, and yeah, that's it. I tried one more time here, and uh, here's how I was feeling about the Wingull. Um, oh my, can you not? This Wingull is so annoying. Why is this Wingull so bad? Stop it, I hate this thing. Oh my gosh. Okay, well I lose this fight. <laughs> There's no way I'm gonna win this now. It does so little. What? It's time to go back and do some training. 
By the way, when I was preparing for this video, I intentionally didn't look at any speedrunning guides because I wanted to be fresh going into this challenge, just so that we could see how I approach it, not how other people have learned to approach it over many, many years. At this point, I was a little bit frustrated and confused though, because I should be able to make it through this fight. Like, how do speedrunners do it? I'm sure that I'm missing something. Either way, we'll just proceed. I guess I'm going to train up, and maybe at level 23 I'll have what it takes. I'm moving first against Wingle now. Maybe the nature that lowers my speed wasn't a good idea just because of this. I'd probably have outsped at a lower level if I had a different nature. Groval's next. I go for Mudshot, and it almost does half. It heals with Absorb. My second Mudshot drops its speed enough, and Marsh Tomp moves first and KOs. Okay, good. I think that outspeeding the Wingull was key for this fight. It would of course be nice to do more damage to Grovile as well. I wonder how I could do that. It's uh, almost like I'm missing something extremely key that would make this fight so much easier. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about that later, don't worry. I have to defeat Wally to gain access to Watson's gym and uh, yeah, he's really bad. <laughs> like a Ralts, okay, whatever. Now, usually for a water starter, an electric gym should be a challenge uh, unless it's a uh, Lieutenant Surge. But for Marsh Tomp, its ground typing is going to make Watson an absolute breeze. Like, I don't really have anything to say about this. Like, yeah, he's just easy to defeat. That's it. Just north of the gym, there is the option to grab the Macho Brace from the Wind Straits. I decided that maybe I should do this just because I might want to do some EV training later on. Apparently, though, the second trainer here has a Rosalia. As soon as it got Stun Spore, I started to worry. No, 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 not like this. No! <laughs> okay, so the last time I saved was before Watson. Generally, I don't save after gym battles because it feels like a waste of time. I didn't expect to lose to the win straights, but I really should have saved in front of them. Well, at least Watson is going to be easy. His first three Pokemon go down without an issue and then Manectric howls and Mudshot misses. This move really doesn't have outstanding accuracy. At least it does more than half when it finally hits but it's not very good at hitting. It misses again, and again, and again. That's four times total, and now I'm out of PP. So I'm gonna need to take the Manectric out with Mud Slap. I get one in, Marsh Tomp survives the quick attack with three hit points, and I get a second Mud Slap in, lowering his accuracy even more. But Watson heals with a Super Potion. Okay, so I'm gonna have to whittle this thing down with Mud Slap. Luckily, it's causing him to miss over and over. But after a second Super Potion, yeah he has two of these I guess, Quick Attack hits and Marsh Tomp faints. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe that I lost to Watson, that's so embarrassing. Uh, at least I managed to defeat him on my next attempt. Alright, I'm heading north again. This time I'm going to skip the win straights. My ego is bruised from the last fight. I catch myself a Meryl and get dirty in the volcano's soot. This area is uh, so cool. And then after that I grab the TM for Dig. I decide to replace Mudshot because Mudslap still could be useful for the accuracy lowering tactics. Next is this little cutscene. In-game cinematics like this were always so cool when I was a kid. Unfortunately, I think that Game Freak actually got this memo, and now our modern Pokemon games are riddled with extended dialogue sequences like this. Please just let me play the game. After that, I get a chance to take the gondola, and I just want to mention that on your way up, there's actually a chance that you can see a hiker walking up the mountain. Unfortunately, he's not here today. I wonder when he's going to show up. I've actually never seen him personally, so I'm really excited to spot him. On the top of Mount Chimney, I face Maxi, and here's some live audio from that fight. Come at me, bro. Oh, Intimidate, you kidding me? <laughs> it's a bad way to start this fight. Oh, it's a really bad way. It's so bad. Are you kidding me? Am I gonna lose to Maxi? Oh, this is bad. This is so bad. This is like never gonna hit. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, this takes four times damage from this, but doesn't lose. It's fine. It survives, of course. No. Come on. Okay, here we go. Oh. I make my way down the mountain into Laverage Town. I visit the Mart and stock up on Super Repels. Now, let's recount some of the things that I've forgotten in my Hoenn playthroughs to date. With Sceptile, I forgot Bullet Seed. Well, I actually didn't know that it existed, so oops. In my Blaziken video, I forgot to grab the charcoal here. And uh, yeah, then I panicked a bit. 
Where is the soft sand and mystic water? I bet I'm forgetting one of them. Well, the soft sand is on the beach at Slateport City. Just great. <laughs> Luckily, the mystic water is held by the gift cast form, so I haven't got a chance to use that one yet. I now suspect that May might have been difficult earlier on because I didn't pick up the soft sand. That's probably how speedrunners get past her consistently. Oh well, I guess I'll have to make Flannery work without the 10% boost to my ground moves. Let's do this. She leads with Nummel, and it has an unfortunate type for a region that is like 7 tenths water. So it goes down to a single water gun. Next is Slugma, and I finished it in a single hit too. I guess the soft sand wouldn't really be helpful here anyways, uh, I'm doing great without it. Camera up is next. I use Water Gun, and uh, it just barely survives, sets up Sunny Day, cutting water's power, and Flannery heals it with a Hyper Potion. I debated using Dig here, but I don't know if it has Magnitude or Earthquake. Those do a lot of damage if I'm underground. Instead, I decided to use Water Gun twice. All that's left is her ace, Torkoal. I use Dig on it, and it's going to be a two hit. So that's it. Flannery was really easy. With my go-go goggles on, I grab a rare candy in the desert, backtrack through the middle of the map, obtain strength on my way, and then I realize that I can't fight Norman without defeating Brawly. Ah. Uh, so there's quite a bit of lost time here having to backtrack to Mr. Briny's ship. At least I can redeem myself by grabbing the soft sand as I make my way there. On Duford, I face Brawly, and he's very easy. I take the ship back to Petalburg, and now it's time to face Dad. Spin does first. I go for Dig, expecting a one hit, but it survives and confuses Swampert. Nah, not good. Water Gun should KO it, but Norman uses a Hyper Potion, and Swampert hits itself not once, but twice. I didn't want to use Dig here because it gives Confusion two turns to activate. However, it doesn't even matter because Swampert is determined to KO itself. Finally, I take the spin to out, and Vigoroth's next. Dig does just more than half, I take a big hit, and knock it out. Linoon goes for Belly Drum, but Dig does just enough to finish it. Still, I have only 20 hit points left against the Slacking. Unfortunately, the Sloth is faster. And uh, yeah, that's a loss. That really did not go well. Without the confusion from Spinda and getting awful luck when I was confused, this should be easier. I use Mudslap first turn to lower Spinda's accuracy, and this prevents Teeter Dance from confusing. Dig takes care of it. For Vigoroth, I went for the same strategy, but it survives my dig. Norman heals it. I make some mistakes trying to use Mudslap over and over. I really should have just used dig twice. Linoon is the same as last time, and I've made it back to Slacking. I went for dig right away this time. Whenever Slacking is loafing around, Swampert is above ground, and whenever Slacking is attacking, I'm underground. So that's really good. However, remember when I said that Slacking was faster? Well, it actually isn't. We have the exact same speed. We're speed tied. So it can move first, and because of this, Swamper gets knocked out again. I make it back to slacking, and when I was playing this, I hadn't actually figured out that we were speed tied yet, so I go for Rock Tomb to lower slacking's speed. That ensures that I move first, then because of dig, slacking can't hit me anymore, so I've got this. The healing items here get really annoying, and a little bit scary actually because they deplete all of dig's PP. But even with that, I'm still able to take the victory. I get Surf, backtrack through these routes, grabbing rare candies along the way, and then I head to Fort Tree City. Now I have access to Citrus Berries, a healing bed in the Weather Institute, uh, nice, nice to have a healing bed, and after defeating all the Aqua members, I get the prized cast form. Uh, well, the prize is just the mystic water that it's holding. Before I reach my destination, I have to fight Mei. Slugma's first, like, why hasn't this thing evolved yet, it's kinda weird. I always thought this fight was a little bit tricky as a kid, but like, she should have better Pokemon. Then, Grovile hits the field. I still have nothing good against this thing. At least Rock Tomb does enough to take it out. In Fort Tree City that follows, I pick up the TM for Hidden Power. If only this was before the Grovile. Oh well. I grab a rare candy, clear Kecleon, and then face Winona. Swablu's first. I use Surf, and it one hits. Tropius is next. Luckily, Rock Tomb does half, but then it misses. That was the worst possible time to miss, come on. However, it turns out that the Tropius isn't very good, it just keeps healing and eventually falls. Pelipper uses Protect, of 
course it does. This thing just loves to annoy you. And then it faints to Rock Tomb. Skarmory's next, and Surf 2 hits it. Well, there is an intervening healing item here, but it doesn't matter. After that, it's her ace, Altaria. This thing is the dragon that is the least looking dragon of all dragons. It's the reason that Gyarados has this expression just constantly fixed on its face. I use Rock Tomb and it crits, so that's it. Now that I can finally fly, it's very frustrating how late you get fly in these games. I can backtrack and do some errands. I grab a rare candy, ice beam, and the TM for return. After that, I head to the magma hideout. The best part of this place is the PP Max, my favorite item. Swampert, Stomps, Maxi, and the entire Aqua Hideout that follows. Now, coming up next is what is usually the hardest spot in these Emerald Runs, Tate and Liza. So how is Swampert gonna deal with them? Claydol and Zatu are first. Bruno is fittingly finished off on turn one. Luckily, Swampert has Surf, which hits both opposing Pokemon, but it doesn't do as much as I was hoping for. Zatu confuses, Swampert damages itself, and my following Surf doesn't KO. So that's it for the first fight. Unfortunately, Earthquake isn't an answer here because her Pokemon are Flyers or they have Levitate. I try Ice Beam on the next fight. By focusing on the Clay Doll, I can get the Solar Rock to come out and use Surf against it but it takes way less damage than I was expecting. This thing, I just look at it and I'm like, it's a fire type, look at it, it looks like the sun, it looks like it has fire coming out of it, like rock fire, anyways. <laughs> I get close because Zatu has had less time to set up, but Swampert still goes down. Because I'm not close to one-shotting or even two-hitting for that matter with Surf, I replace the Mystic Water with a Citrus Berry to give Swampert slightly more sustain. This fight really doesn't go well, I don't even make it to the Lunatone. So yeah, this is starting to feel a bit hopeless. However, another aspect of the starters that I've forgotten until this point is the fact that they have abilities. So yeah, be proud of me. <laughs> I remember in this case that Swampert has Torrent. This ability boosts my water type moves by 50% when Swampert's HP is one third or less. Also, I wanna take the Zatu out first because it's getting set up with Calm Mind. This time I'm lucky that Ice Beam freezes. I take the Claydol down, get a big hit on the following Soul Rock, it doesn't go down, but it's still a lot of damage, and I do manage to finish the Zatu off. Lunatone's last. I use Surf, it does half, and takes the Soul Rock out. However, Tate and Liza go for Calm Mind, and that gives me another chance to attack, and that's it. So yeah, I did it. And I didn't even need Torrent. That wasn't nearly as bad as it has been in the past, but still not a decisive victory. Now, with them out of the way, it's time for the story. I grab Dive, some more candies, defeat Archie, unleash Rayquaza, and then I get to face Juan, the uh, gym leader who looks like a Lego character. This, this sprite, like I cannot get over it. It bothers me so much. His lead is the incredibly intimidating Love Disc. It's fast and it confuses Swampert, ah, oh, not again, before Earthquake gets the KO. Wishcash is next, Earthquake one hits, the following Celo survives, gets a Hyper Potion, but then fades to my second hit. Crawdont also survives, but gets taken out after a healing item. Okay, so like Juan, the only thing he's capable of doing apparently is using potions. Kingdra is last though, and this thing can be scary because it likes to set up double team. However, I get a crit, and that's it. Before I head to Victory Road, I pick up the TM for Brick Break. It might be useful against Glacia, as well as Sydney, I guess. In Victory Road, I face Wally, but he's sort of a pushover in this game. So how's the league gonna be? Personally, I have high expectations for Swampert. I think that it's going to outclass Blaziken here and become the best Pokemon that I've used so far in this game. However, that's just my theory. Let's find out. Sydney's first. Mightyena intimidates Swampert, lowering its attack, and that prevents Earthquake from getting the KO. Sydney chooses Sand Attack next. Ah, so this is a really bad start for the fight. He heals Mightyena with a full restore, but I have the time I need to two-shot it with Earthquake. Next is Cacturn. I choose Ice Beam, and it one-hits. Shiftry, on the other hand, survives. I start missing because of Sand Attack, and that gives it time to set up two turns of Swagger. While the confusion is a bit annoying, I'm going to be so powerful once I finally strike back. Please, Swampert, just don't knock yourself out. Like, I've had bad confusion luck this run already. 
after Shift Tree, Swampert snaps out of confusion, and that allows it to one-hit both of Sydney's final two Pokemon. Okay, Phoebe's next. Dusclops uses Protect. My next Earthquake doesn't KO, but then it uses Curse, and uh, oh no. <laughs> there are four Pokemon left, and in Generation 3, Curse deals damage even when you knock the opponent out. So that's an issue. However, I level up on the way, and Swampert has just barely enough to survive, but it still can't KO the final Dusclops. I try again, but once more, Curse is my undoing. Alright, I've saved 10 rare candies until this point. Ideally, I'd save them until after the league so that I can make Steven easier, but maybe some right now could help. As a start, I give Swampert 3, but this doesn't impact the fight's outcome at all. I don't want to use any more rare candies, so I revert back to my older level by reloading my save, and this time the first Dusclops seems to be tired of using Curse. Instead, it just spams Protect a bunch, and I run out of Earthquake PP before I take it down. Uh, that's because of its ability pressure, by the way. It causes Pokemon to use twice as much PP when attacking. It's uh, frustrating. So while I'm not cursed, I, I am cursed because my PP is limited, and I actually run out before the final Dusclops. There is no way that I survive 20 turns while I deplete Return, so I might as well just save some time and reset. There's a simple way to get away from my PP problems here, and that's just to use a PP Max and a PP Up. In the next fight, Dusclops is once again kind and grants me a curse-free start. Turns out this fight is quite easy after that. I sweep through the rest of her Pokemon and win. Against Glacia, you can see that I'm used to playing Generation 1, where the AI doesn't always use healing items, they're just like sort of random sometimes. But in Generation 3, they use full restores 100% of the time that their Pokemon are under a certain threshold of health. I really should be using two turns of return instead of Earthquake to defeat these Pokemon, that way I can prevent the use of a healing item. A combination of hail and chip damage has really been stacking up against Swampert throughout this fight. Because of that, I have too little health and the wall rain takes me out. Remember when I picked up Brick Break? Yeah, maybe I should be using that right now. However, when I start using it, I realize that it isn't better than Earthquake. After all, Brick Break is 75 base power, so if it's super effective, it does 150 effective power. Whereas Earthquake, which is 100 base power and is neutral against these Pokemon, gets Stab, so it gets 150 effective power as well. However, in this case, Earthquake is actually better because I'm holding the Soft Sand, giving it an effective power of 165. So yeah, it's a little bit better. Once again, I arrive at the Wall Rain with too little health, and Swampert goes down. Maybe what I really need is a Citrus Berry to give me just enough health to survive her Ace's attack. However, this leads to my worst performance yet. Alright, it's time to use some rare candies. I use 4, and that brings Swampert up to level 61. You will notice that I uh, go to 61 instead of just 60, which would make more sense from a damage rounding perspective and saving rare candies. However, I filmed this a long time ago. I was hoping that this would give me the damage ranges I needed, but the Celo still survives a single hit. Like, come on. The Glalie is next, and it's no different. That leads to a scenario where the second Glalie gets taken to low health and then uses Explosion. Okay, that's, uh, that's definitely the best way to lose. When I reset, I got a little bit sloppy and forgot to use the rare candies again, so Glacia finishes me off. This is really not going well. I'm going to use two more rare candies, and that way Swampert will go all the way up to level 63. Finally, this is good for damage rounding, and this allows me to one hit. Alright, so this fight was a bit tricky, but now it's trivial. I get to the wall rain, it takes more than half, I survive its attack, it eats a citrus berry, but it doesn't heal it enough. So I'm finally moving on. Now, I have very low expectations for how Drake is going to perform. I have Ice Beam after all, so let's check this out. That's a, there's a one hit, that's another one hit, another one, so yeah, um, this is really easy. Swampert ends up taking basically a free victory here. Now all that's left is a champion. In the region with too much water, it's fitting that the champion is also a water type user. Whale Lords first. Return does half, Water Spout does very little because uh, it has less health. This is how this move works, I know that now. Thank you for letting me know in the comments. Ludicolo is next. I hate this thing by the way, just a brief aside. Completely dislike this Pokemon. One of the worst Pokemon introduced in Gen 3. I try Ice Beam, it does a third, so a neutral return will be stronger but not quite strong enough to get the KO. Ludicolo hits with a big Giga Drain, and then I knock it out. Tentacruel's next. Swampert tanks a Hydro Pump, and then Earthquake does enough. Wish Cash falls to a critical hit, 
but I don't have an answer to the following Gyarados. The reason is, is that I'm just too damaged when I arrive at it, and I need three uses of Return to knock it out. An obvious improvement here would be to use Return twice on Ludicolo, that way I can take it out without losing any health because it usually sets up double team on turn one. Tentacruel poisons me with Toxic, I make it to Gyarados again, but still I can't defeat it. However, Ludicolo can use Giga Drain, and when it does, Swampert can't defeat it with two uses of Return, so this is bad. <laughs> I bring Hidden Power into the next fight because maybe this flying move will help me defeat the Ludicolo. However, it creates a different problem. He uses a full restore now and this gives Ludicolo another turn. It uses Leech Seed, and in this case, all of the damage stacks up and it finishes me off after Gyarados comes out. If I get lucky and knock the Ludicolo out with two returns, I can make it all the way to Gyarados again. It starts by setting up Dragon Dance for two turns and then hits with Hyper Beam. I was so surprised when I survived it. However, Swampert doesn't have enough health to defeat the Milotic, which follows. Alright, I'm feeling a bit defeated here. I decided to use my last three rare candies before the next fight. I hope that this is going to give Hidden Power better damage ranges and allow me to one-shot the Ludicolo. But it doesn't do enough. I make it to the Gyarados again, Wallace full restores it, and then the Ace Milotic takes Swampert out. Because Tentacruel has Toxic, I was bringing the Petra Berry into this fight. However, I could bring the Soft Sand in instead and one-hit it with Earthquake. But unfortunately, this doesn't help against the Gyarados, so it takes me out. Maybe Soft Sand is the wrong decision. What if I bring a Citrus Berry into the fight so I have slightly more health? Return 2 hits Wailord, Ludicolo is next. I take it out over 2 turns, luckily. Earthquake 1 hits the Tentacruel. Wishcash tries to set up Amnesia, but faints over 3 turns. I really should be using 2 returns against it, by the way. Gyarados, my nemesis, is next. Return does just over a third, he uses Dragon Dance twice, he uses a full restore, and follows it up with Earthquake, and finally Hyper Beam. But Swampert hangs on with four hit points. My Lodic comes out, and the Citrus Berry heals. My Earthquake does half, and my Lodic's Ice Beam doesn't KO. Okay, I had some feels here. It's not gonna one hit. Oh, oh you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I was, that was so hype. And then the freeze? Okay, are you ready for the pain? Let's go through this. Ludicolo Giga Drains, Gyarados finishes me off twice. I lose too much health before the Gyarados. Ludicolo wins because of double team. Hyper Beam KOs. So this is really not going well. 36 resets. If I had brought rest into this fight, I would have had more success, but I didn't grab the TM when I had the chance. Ah, I just never should leave rest. Rest is so good. I really didn't anticipate this fight being that hard. At this point, I'm just waiting for some luck against Gyarados or Milotic. This time my return gets a crit and one-shots the Gyarados. Okay, so that's what I needed. With it, Swampert has cleared the champion in two and a half hours. But the toughest trainer in the game is still waiting. How will Swampert do against Steven Stone? Skarmory's first. It outspeeds, uses Toxic, and my Surf doesn't even do half. So that's a completely demoralizing way to start the first fight. Without rest, I can't win now. Let's try again with a Petra Berry. This time it doesn't try to poison me, and because I gave up the Mystic Water, Surf is not doing as much damage. Still, I manage to take it out, and Aggron's next. I go for Surf, and it takes it out in a single hit, and then Cradley comes out. I try Hidden Power Flying, but it does almost nothing and Giga Drain finishes Swampert off. Okay, what about Earthquake? Unfortunately, it doesn't do enough to two-shot after Cradley heals with Giga Drain. I tried Return next just in case, but it obviously does less because the rock type resists normal moves. I need something else here. To get it, I head to Lily Cove City, and I search high and low in the department store because I have no idea where anything is here yet. When I finally find the TMs, I buy Blizzard. Maybe this is what I need. It does half to Cradley, and that's the best that I've done so far. In the next fight, I realize that Cradley will also use Ingrain sometimes, and that gives me two turns to knock it out with Blizzard. For the first time, I'm moving on. Claydol's next. I decide to use Surf here because Blizzard has 70% accuracy. Yeah, they patched it now. It's not as good as it once was. But Claydol gets Light Screen up before I hit. I try Earthquake, but of course it has Levitate. Like, ah. Blizzard isn't doing much more than Surf. 
I managed to knock it out, however Metagross outspeeds and finishes Swampert. Here we go, here's some more pain. Giga Drain KOs, I attack too much against Claydol and it finishes me by moving first. Blizzard misses, Giga Drain KOs anyways. Giga Drain does a lot and Ancient Power KOs, come on. Skarmory poisons and I reset to avoid wasting time. Giga Drain KOs and uh, I bet that you can guess it, Giga Drain KOs. It's at this point that many people will be like writing in the comments that I'm intentionally throwing with Swampert and I assure you that this is not the case. I'm always trying to get the best result with every Pokemon I use. Sometimes I play better, and uh, sometimes I play worse. In this case, I was getting stuck in a bit of a bias, and I hadn't realized it yet. Here's where my head was at. Blizzard gave me just enough hope that I felt like I could win. After playing poorly against Metagross, I believed that if I made it back to it, I could play better and take the victory. Seeing this chance, I went for it, because at the time I didn't see a better alternative. However, I took a moment, researched Cradley, and discovered that its special defense is higher than its physical defense. So I want a more effective physical move. Iron Tail looks like a good candidate. It even has 5% more accuracy. Yes, Iron Tail has 5% more accuracy than Blizzard. I can't believe how bad this move is. But it might be the way to victory. If you know these games really well, you'll appreciate just how funny it is that I'm going to use Iron Tail, because it's like literally a stone's throw away from Steven. So how does it do against the Cradley? Well, it's doing more than Blizzard, but not nearly enough to get the KO after Giga Drain heals. Steven makes a funny mistake in the next fight because Ancient Power just barely doesn't KO Swampert. Like, why did he use Ancient Power? This is so weird. But Claydol is faster, so it doesn't end up mattering. Clearly the issue is damage, so I need to spend some time leveling up. Overall, I'm having a really fun time learning a new generation, but Swampert has me quite frustrated. So I decided to drop the veil and check how speedrunners use it in the league, and that's when I realized that they replace it with Rayquaza. So yeah, I can see why. Swampert's effectiveness really does drop off after you defeat Wan. So I come back after leveling up a bit, and I thought that this would help, but yeah, it's really not doing much more damage to Cradley. At this point, I think I should mention damage rounding and how it works. The way it works is that Pokemon, when their levels end in a 0, a 3, a 5, or an 8, they do significantly more damage than the prior level. So here's an example. From level 70 to 71 to 72, the damage increases only a small amount for each level, but at level 73, the damage makes a big jump up. So in this case, I really shouldn't be fighting Steven so many times at level 71. I should stop and level up to level 73 instead. However, when I filmed this, I didn't have this information yet. Luckily, after doing a bit more training, it just so happens that I return at level 73, so this is great. Well, uh, it's only so great because I'm still losing. However, the damage to Cradley is much more inspiring now. I can basically always two hit it now. I finish off the clay doll, Metagross comes out, I survive its earthquake, and then I get a critical hit. Okay. That's it, I've done it, Armaldo's last, and here are my thoughts about its typing in the moment. It's bug? Is it bug? I think it's bug. Bug ground. It's really funny that then I use a ground move against it. Yeah, a ground move <laughs> against a bug rock type. Just great. Earthquake does half and slash KOs me. So that was close, and that's very unfortunate because I thought I was close, but I really am not. I continue to reset over and over and over. <laughs> Iron Tail is just so painful to use because of its accuracy. Finally, I'm feeling defeated, so I head back out to level more. I return at level 76 to try again. I survive Claydol's Earthquake, use Rest to heal, and at this point I've figured out that stalling it out so that Metagross doesn't have a light screen is the best way to play. Also, if I use Rest enough, it runs out of Earthquake and then it starts doing less damage. But I accidentally get KO'd here when I decide to proceed to the Metagross with less than ideal health. I have a Mystic Water now by the way, I use Surf, it does under half, I successfully heal, and when I wake up I'm able to take the Metagross out. Armaldo's last. I'm faster, so I heal, it does a lot of damage while Swampert snoozes, but finally I wake up, I hit twice with Earthquake, and that's it. Swampert clocks in with a time of 3 hours, 28 minutes, and 12 seconds, with 81 resets at level 77, and with a game time of 9 hours and 29 minutes. I get asked a lot, what's the most frustrating playthrough you've done? And honestly, I think Swampert might be it. 
Maybe it's tied with seal. You see, my frustration doesn't come from a run taking a long time like Abra, or a run being inconsistent like Hitmonlee. My frustration purely comes from the fact that my expectations are high for a run, and then the Pokemon doesn't come close to living up to them. I took wildly different approaches to Sceptile, Blaziken, and Swampert because I've been figuring out my approach to Generation 3. So just take this comparison with a grain of salt. Also, once I learn these games more, I'll have a better chance of comparing these three much more fairly in a future video. I wonder what kind of video that will be. For now, Blaziken felt like the strongest of the three, I put Sceptile in second place, and Swampert definitely felt like the weakest. Of course, this thing is a beast throughout most of the game. It makes sense why speedrunners pick it. However, it also makes sense why they decide to replace it for the late game, because that's where it really falls off. Like, subscribe, ring the chime echo, and leave a comment because I gotta read them all. Thanks to my patrons for their support. We're almost finished the Generation 2 Pokedex, by the way, which is fitting because there's going to be a lot more Gen 3 content very soon. If you've made it this far, you're incredible. Now, it's bloopers time. These Gen 3 move pools, they finally make sense. The ice moves cover its double weakness to grass types. However, these utilize its... Where did I... The ice moves cover its double weakness to grass types, however, these utilize its special attack, so I'd like to have a physical move that can hiss his scrat ties oh yeah, of course, that that. Also, speedrunners clock in immediately after the league, while I require myself to ah, come on. Wingull misses supersonic, rock tomb one hits, Grovile hits the field, and Mudshop does one mud shop, yes, of course, that's the move. Mud shop. Let's go to the mud shop. It heals with absorb, my second mud shot drop. It heals with Absorb, my second Mudshot drop. Mudshot is hard to say. I catch myself a Meryl, get dirty in the Volcanoes. Volcanoes, yes, Volcano, that's what it is. Next is Slugma, I finish it in a single tit. Ah. Uh, so there's quite a bit of lost time here having to backtrack to Mr. Br Brinny. Br 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 Briny? Briny? Who is what is his name? Mr. Briny? Mr. Brinny? Briny. I think it's Briny, like brine, like water. I grab a rare candy, ice beam, the TM for a return, and then I head to the magma hi hideout. Yes, the magma hideout. That, that's what I'm trying to say. Before I head to Victory Road, I pick up the TM for brick rate. Brick. Oh, oh what the heck? <laughs> mighty Yama. My mighty mighty Yama. Yama. You just changed one word. That Pokemon sounds really funny. Mighty Yama in intimidates. Mighty Yama. My, mighty. Ah, oh, come on. Swampert stomps Max. Swampert stomps 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 Maxi. Well, he does also stop Maxi. Swampert stomps Max. Stomps Maxi. This Swampert stomps Maxi. Swampert stomps Maxi, and the entire Aqua High. Swampert stops. Stomp. Swampert stomps Maxi. Swampert stops. Stomps. Wish Cash is next. Wish Cash. Wish Cash. I wish for some cash. But what am I saying? The. the, the I just sat there for a moment. I was just like, that's not a joke. <laughs> uh...